In the last video lecture, we understood monohybrid cross and reciprocal cross performed by Mendel. Let's recall the main observations made by Mendel in these experiments. Mendel observed that out of the two traits for a particular character of the pea plant, only one appeared in the F1 generation. Mendel termed this trait as the dominant trait, and the trait which remained hidden was termed recessive. So, in our example, tall stem length is the dominant trait and dwarf stem length is the recessive trait. Mendel also noted that the F2 generation consisted of plants having both dominant and recessive traits. For example, there were tall as well as dwarf plants in the F2 generation. And, the ratio of dominant to recessive trait was nearly 3 to 1. The reciprocal cross produced the similar results. And, Mendel concluded that both parents contribute equally to inheritance. Keeping these observations in mind, let's now understand the four main hypotheses proposed by Mendel. According to Mendel's first hypothesis, for each character, an individual has two copies of a heritable factor. Since, today we know heritable factors are actually the genes. Therefore, we will use the term gene. Thus, according to Mendel, for each character an individual has two copies of a gene. One gene is inherited from the maternal parent and, one from paternal parent. The second hypothesis states that, there are alternative versions of genes. And, these alternative versions are responsible for variations in the inherited characters. For example, the gene for stem length exists in two versions, one responsible for the tall trait and, another responsible for the dwarf trait. Today, it is known to us that, the alternative versions of a gene are called allele. Now, to understand these hypotheses better, let's learn how geneticists represent genes or alleles in organisms. In genetics, we use italicized letters to represent alleles. Dominant alleles are designated by the first letter of the trait. This letter is a capital letter. For example, tall stem length of pea plant is the dominant trait. The first letter of the trait is T. So, the dominant allele is represented by capital letter T. The recessive allele is also indicated by writing the first letter of the dominant trait, but this letter is written in lower case. For example, Dwarf stem length is the recessive trait, the allele is written as small t. So, the two versions of the gene for stem length in pea plant are capital T and small t. Capital T represent tall allele which is dominant. And, small t represent dwarf allele which is recessive. An individual receives only one allele from one parent. That is, one from father and one from mother. So, total allele inherited by the individual for a character will be two. These two allele inherited by an individual can be, same, or different. Mendel's third hypothesis states that, when the two allele inherited by an individual are different, the allele that determines the individual's appearance is called, the dominant allele. And, the allele that has no observable effect on the organism's appearance is called, the recessive allele. Note that, dominant and recessive terms describe the case when, two different allele are present together. So, when tall and dwarf allele are present together, tall trait is expressed by the plant, making tall allele the dominant allele and, dwarf allele the recessive allele. Let's now understand the fourth hand, most important hypothesis proposed by Mendel. Mendel proposed that, when gametes are formed, the allele for each gene in an individual separate independently of each other. That means, a gamete carries only one allele for each inherited character. And, when gametes unite during fertilization, each gamete contribute one allele. Let's understand this by illustration. 
recall that, in the mono-hybrid cross we have the P generation, where the male plant was tall and, female plant was dwarf. Since, the plants in P generation were true breeding, the two allele in each of these plants will be identical according to the trait. So, the male will have two dominant allele for tall stem length. And, the female will have two recessive allele for dwarf stem length. Each of these plants will produce gametes. According to Mendel, allele separate during gamete formation. So here, we will have two gametes formed by the tall parent each having a single tall allele. And, dwarf parent will produce gametes each having a dwarf allele. Note, that both male and female plant of P generation produced a single type of gamete. When fertilization takes place, the two gametes fuse. So, in the F1 progeny we have now two different allele. Recall that, when dominant and recessive allele are present together, the recessive allele is not expressed. Since tall allele is dominant, the individuals of F1 generation are all tall. This explains that, in the monohybrid cross, all the F1 progeny had tall stem length. Let's now understand what happens when, individuals of F1 generation are self-fertilized or, fertilized with each other. When these plants produce gametes, half of the gametes receive the dominant allele, and half receive the recessive allele. During fertilization, these gametes then pair randomly. Now, there are four possible combinations of gametes. The first combination is, one dominant allele from male parent and one dominant allele from the female parent. In this case, the plant will be tall. Second combination is, one dominant allele from the male parent and one recessive allele from the female parent. Third combination is, one recessive allele from the male parent and one dominant allele from the female parent. Now, in both these combinations, one allele is dominant and, one is recessive. So, the plants with such combination of allele will be tall. Keep in mind that, dominant allele is always written first. The fourth combination is, one recessive allele from the male parent and one recessive allele from the female parent. This plant will be dwarf because, there is no dominant allele to mask the effect of the recessive allele. So, for one dwarf plant there will be three tall plants. This explains the 3 to 1 ratio in F2 generation in mono-hybrid cross performed by Mendel. Let us quickly recall the four hypotheses proposed by Mendel. For each character, individual inherits two copies of a gene. Alternative versions of genes are called allele. When two allele present together are different. The allele which is expressed, is known as, the dominant allele. Allele separate during gamete formation. These four hypotheses can be summarized as, the principle of segregation. The principle of segregation is also known as, Mendel's first law. According to this law, each individual possesses two allele for a particular character. One is inherited from the maternal parent and, one is inherited from the paternal parent. During the formation of gametes, the two alleles segregate from each other. As a result, one allele goes into each gamete. That's all in today's video lecture. In the next video lecture, we will learn what is Punnett square and, how it is helpful in genetic analysis. Thank you for watching.